Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and a really interesting puzzle for us today. This is the, the most collaborational puzzle I think we've ever done on the channel. Um, I'm looking forward to having a go at it. I will run you through the story of it in a moment. I do want to mention our um, three times a Sudoku competition on Patreon, which uh, is getting quite a few entries and we would love you to have a go at it. If you are a patron, we'd love you to join Patreon to have a go at it. That would be great. Um, it is available until the 20th of April, so uh, or the competition's open until the 20th of April. Patrons can have a look at it at any time, of course, but um, it's an interesting set of puzzles uh, on one grid. Now, that's there on Patreon. Um, on Well, we'll get to Discord in a moment. Um, Discord is the meeting. Well, no, let's get to Discord now. Discord is the meeting place for a lot of very clever minds, and indeed, all kinds of minds meet on Discord and discuss puzzles and all sorts of things. And then sometimes they break off and uh, collaborate in various ways on puzzles, and that's what we're going to get today. Now, the other links under the video are the normal things to our merchandise, which is going very well, and our apps and uh, Sven Sudoku Pad, etc. But if you call up this puzzle in our software on the first link, at the bottom of the rule set, um, I'm not responsible for the rule set. This was done by the constructors, so it wasn't me who misspelled horizontal. Um, at the bottom of the rule set is a link to, or a, a URL for a video, uh, in which you can actually watch this puzzle being constructed. Now, a lot of the queries we get on the site are, can we see a puzzle being constructed? I mean, we have done a bit of that, certainly on Patreon. Uh, one of our early videos was um, Christoph Seliger spending hours constructing a puzzle that was, that was very good, and uh, it was a really interesting video. We did several other setter videos on Patreon from different setters, I've done one myself even before that Christoph video on the main channel. Uh, you can probably hunt it down. Me setting probably a sandwich Sudoku, although I don't remember for sure. Um, but anyway, this puzzle and its collaboration was involved the participation on chat, I think, in a, in a stream of over 20 setters and solvers, including but not limited to Worm, Directionary, Christoph Seliger, Olimar, Xenonetics, Eleventicle, Zombie Hunter, J40, Finland Taipan, Ambrose, Logan Wall, Totally Normal Cat, The Asylum, Tall Cat, Woofer ZFG, Andrew Zarkas, Niverio, Lucy, Listesh, Philip Huber, Piotr V, Casey Cotro, The Sonic Person, Riff Clown, Emphirio, et al. <laughs> and, um, uh, subtitle, who uh, is one of the main three ranks, Zetamath and Subtitle are the main three contributors, I think. And uh, Subtitle told us, you may recognize some of those names. Well, I recognize nearly all of them. Uh, for only one or two of them, would this be a channel debut if it counted as that? But anyway, do have a look at this puzzle. Um, it promises to be very interesting. And as I say, it was compiled by a committee. Now, What's the classic story that a camel is a horse designed by a committee, which is kind of a, a, a knock against group, group think. But let's hope in this case it's turned in a really good puzzle. I, it, the reports are good. So the rules are these. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits on an arrow sum to the value in the diamond. So these sort of diamondy circles act as arrows. So those three digits add up to that number. Now... If the arrow is horizontal, then the digit in the diamond indicates where the column number of the diamond appears in the row. Ah, okay. So e.g., if row 9, column 5 is a 7, then row 9, column 7, that's saying that 5, because this is column 5 in this row, in this row, because we've got a horizontal arrow, the number 5, because this is column 5, appears in column 7. So that 7 would mean this is a 5. So that's how this sort of indexing work works. And when the arrow is pointing down, it works downwards. So I'm going to say if this was a 4, that would say that there was a 2 in the fourth row. Because this is row 2, there'd be a 2 there. And actually that would be impossible. But I'm just giving examples of how the rule works. If the arrow points, if arrows point both ways, then 
that relationship holds in both directions. How does the rule set? If a diamond has both arrow has arrows in both directions, then it follows both rules. This puzzle was constructed on stream with help from the community. So thanks to everybody involved, 20 plus people, um, and let's give this a go. Do try it on the link under the video. That's where you'll see that rule set as well and the link. And uh, I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. And I think, well, where's the place to start? I think there are only two three cell arrows and these are they. So we know that the, the number in the diamond is six, seven, eight or nine. And we know that because the minimum value of three Sudoku numbers that have to be different is six. And that means for the row, that means that two, because this is column two, appears in row six, seven, eight or nine. Aha. It means for the column, because this has a down arrow as well, that the number two, because this is row two, appears in row six, seven, eight or nine. Now that is interesting for this reason. I see this. Two is now not on this arrow because two in this row is in one of these cells. So it's clearly not on the arrow. And that has now ruled out this being a six or seven arrow because that would need a two on. It would be one, two, three or one, two, four. So that is eight or nine. And if it's eight, this is a one, three, four arrow. If it's nine, yeah, if it's nine, it's not two, three, four or one, two, six. It's one, three, five. So this arrow definitely has a one and a three on. And I think it's, exact, it's exactly the same going down because this is row two, column two we're starting from. And now that we've got eight or nine, we can actually cut out the twos from these cells because we know that the two is in column eight or nine in row two, row eight or nine in column two. And I was about to apologize for having twos across boxes in the pencil marking. I will now apologize for having one, three. Oh, I've, sorry, I was meant to write one, three, four or five, because this is either a one, three, four or a one, three, five arrow, both of them. In fact, they'll be the same, won't they? Uh, because this number will be the same for both directions. But then what do we do? Um, this, this can't be a one, two or a three. I suppose it could barely be those being a circle in an arrow. Okay, that's not very interesting. This is not very interesting either. Same, same deal applies. Oh yeah, these arrows are very symmetrical, aren't they? I've just noticed that. Um, what about this? Ah. This could, I was going to say, this could be any number from five up. Now, the reason I say five is because these two arrows have to add up to at least ten because they're four different digits. Ten divided by five is two, so this is at least five. Now, if this was a five, these would be one, two, three, and four. How would you fill these two cells with one, two, three, and four already gone in the box? You can't put five in them both, so that's not a five. I think the same applies if this is six. These are one, two, four, and five, and you can't put three in both of those, so it's not a six. So have we got an eight, nine pair, or can this be a seven? If it was a seven, ah, it's very difficult. If it's a seven, where do eight and nine go in the box? One there, and the other one would have to be here. So that would have to be eight with a one there and a nine here. And that's impossible because that would be, oh no, that would be saying five goes in column nine. Okay, that's not impossible yet. Okay, let's think about seven being here. Um, these are, yeah, these, Okay, these six digits would be one, two, three, four, five, and six, which are three pairs of numbers that add up to seven. One pair would be there, one pair would be there, the third pair would be here. That would have to be three and four. So four would be on this arrow. 
on one of these arrows. So this would be an eight. So if that's a seven, this is an eight, this is a three, four pair. Ah, oh, this doesn't work at all because that makes this a nine, which it can't be on this arrow. So this is not a seven. Yeah, I mean, the other way to look at that is if this is a seven, that's an eight, that's a nine. Now you can't put a four in one of these cells, but then you can't, you can't make up this set of arrows. I mean, it doesn't work with a seven here. So that is an eight, nine pair now. Now, is that helpful? You see, now, it, now it's not so profitable to ask where does 7 go in the box because it could be on one of these arrows, 7, 1 or 7, 2, easily. Ah, but this 8 or 9, of course, I hadn't thought about this for 8 at all. Where does the one, where does, what does this diamond mean? It means that the number 1 goes in column 8 or 9 in that row, row 8 or 9 in that O, in that column. Um, in that O, whatever I'm saying. Right, so if this is an 8, it doesn't have a 1 on the arrow because there's a 1 there and a 1 there. So the, these would be 2, 6, 3 and 5. That would be a 1, 4 pair. This would be a 7. It's possible, isn't it? That's if this was an 8. Then this would be a 9. These would be 1, 3, 5. You'd have twos here, ones here. It might work, mightn't it? Now the alternative is that this is a nine, but without a one on the arrow. And that's fine, because then you get eight here. Oh, it's tricky. Okay, I haven't figured this one out yet. Probably, I mean, I imagine that all the constructors of this and anybody who watched the live stream understood a lot more about how this rule set operates than I do, because I have no experience of it. Um, right, eight or nine here. Okay, let's think again. If it's an eight, these are a two, six and a three, five pair. Then you have to have, ah, that doesn't work. Yes, you have to have one and four. Yes. Because, okay, let's go through this slowly. If this was an eight, in fact, let's fill in the digits. If this was an eight, remember there's a one here and a one here. So these pairs would have to be two, six, and three, five in some order. Now that would leave these cells to be a one and a four. So one of them would have to be a four, but the nine, which would have to go here, cannot have a four on it because it can't be two, three, four because of these two positions. So that doesn't work. And in fact, it's not an 8 in the corner. That's 9 in the corner losing its religion. Um, and now, this is 8. So now we know these are 1, 3, 4 sets. So let's take out the corner marks. They're 1, 3, 4 sets. In fact, now this is an 8. These are 2s. Let's not forget the actual effect of the rule. Let's get rid of those markings. These are ones because of the nine in the top left corner. Um, this is five, six, or seven by Sudoku. So is this. So on the end of it is four, three, or two. Same is true here. Now, what, what can this pair be? If this was 2, 7, and 3, 6, then you'd get 1, 4 here, and this would be 5. If this was 2, 7, and 4, 5, you'd get 1, 3 here, and this would be 6. If this was the other possibility, which is 3, 6 in one, and 5, 4 in the other, you can't even do it, because you can't fill these. If you had 3, 6, and 5, 4 there, you'd still have one, two, and seven to put in these cells, and you can't do that. So, this is five or six, which is quite a big number. That makes this one, two, three, or four, and this is at least six. Now, this is saying, this has got a horizontal and a vertical arrow as well. So, this is saying that the number five, because this is column five, is somewhere out here, right? And if 5's out there, it's not here. This is now a 6. 
So this isn't four and this isn't six. Now that's not five anymore. Five somewhere out here based on this seven, eight or nine. What's that doing in the column? That's saying that three, because this is row three, is somewhere down here. Um, I'll look at those in a moment. That means this is not a three. Three is somewhere in these cells. Can it be here? If it's there, then on the arrow we have one and two. No, it can't be here because there's a horizontal arrow. If you put three in, in this cell, that would say that five was in this cell in column three in the row. And that's nonsense, obviously. The arrow is broken. So three's not there. Three's on this arrow. Um, yeah, we'll come back to that probably very soon if I run out of steam up here, which I probably will do. Right, 81342. These are from... Oh, no, these can't be five because five's in the box in one of those cells. So six, seven, or nine there. Five, six, seven, or nine there. Same in this column. Five, six, seven, and nine still to go. I don't think I can rule five out of that yet. But six, seven, or nine here means that two in this column is in one of these cells. Five, six, seven, or nine here means that two in this row is in one of these cells. Now, this is a bit of a clash of corner marks, but I'm going to just try and remember what I'm doing here. Ah, now, if two was here, if two was here, that would push three to here. This would be a five. That works for the diamond, but hang how are you going to make up five on this arrow? You couldn't do one, four because of that, and you couldn't do two, three, because they're already in those positions, so that can't be two or three. So this is not a two. Two is in one of those. This is now not a five. Six, seven, or nine there. It looks quite likely that they're both sevens with a two here, but we don't know that yet because... Yeah, you could have that combination or that combination as well. I think those are the only three combinations. That one, that one, and that alone as the answers to these diamonds. Um, now, seven, eight, nine, we've done that. But we've got three on this arrow. Now, what can we put here? At the moment, it's... We, we, OK, the first thing I know is it's got to be bigger than 3 to make the arrow work. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. But this is determining where 5 goes in this row. It can't be a 4 here with a 5 there because the arrow's broken. We just worked out it's not a... Oh, did we work out it's not a 5 here? Yes, we still did. It can't be 3, 2 here, not only because we can't put 2 in one of those cells, but also because 3, 2 there would make this cell in particular impossible. So it's not a 5 there. So the 9, no, the 5, goes in one of these cells. Oh, this can't be a 6 either, because that can't be double 3. And there is a 3 on the arrow. So it's either 7, 8, or 9. This is either 3, 4, 3, 5, or 3, 6. Actually, that's worth pencil marking. Now, the 7, 8, 9 means that 5 in this row goes in one of these three cells in columns 7, 8, or 9. So that's not 5. Um, and in this column, what does it mean? It means that the 9 goes in row 7, 8, or 9. Well, it's got to be in row 9. That's a 9. And that puts a 5 here. Gosh, it just takes a moment to actually think what these diamonds mean. So that's now uh, a 3-6 pair. And this can't be 4-5 or 1-8 or 3-6, because that cell can't be either. So this is 2-7. And this cell has become a sort of naked 6. That's not a 6 now, so there's no 2 there. Now, there must be a 2 in one of these positions for this diamond, and that will take up the 2 in box 9, so there isn't one here. So we're left to two combinations, a pair there or just that one. I mean, I, I know that doesn't feel like a combination. There's no 6 in those. That can't be a 3 now. Hmm. 
Okay, what next? That is saying two. And one of, oh, this can't be a nine anymore because we took the two out of there. Actually, I could fill in three, four, eight as a triple in which that one can't be a three because of the three, six pair. Um, so this pair adds up to six or seven and it doesn't have a two in it. So if it's six, it's five, one. We know the order because of that. If it's seven, it's not two, five, and it's not six, one, because that cell can't be either. So if it's seven, it's a three, four pair. And that would make this eight, seven, three, four, eight. Oh, and there's a two on this thing. Mm. Oh, look, seven is looking at that in its box. Sorry, I need to need to wake up and spot these things. So we get a nine there. That says two is in row nine, uh, column nine. So that two that I thought was going to be right is not. We get the two on the top of the arrow here. So what, okay, this can't be nine, two, or five. So at first blush, this can be one, three, four, six, or seven. But this diamond, now watch out, this diamond only applies to the column. Most of the diamonds I've been looking at, maybe apart from these two, have done both. But this is saying that eight is in its row. Well, eight can only be there, there, or there in rows one, or, or here actually, in rows one, five, eight, and nine. Well, it can't be a one in this diamond. It can't be a five because we've got a five in the box. So that's eight or nine. This is six or seven. That's forming a pair. Yeah, so if this is a nine, that's an eight. If this is an eight, itself is an eight. I don't know how to say that in English. Um, it hasn't fixed whether... Oh no, we know that the two is in row six. Yes, that has been fixed. Ah, this is what's hard about this. Nine, and that does put an eight in row nine, and that finishes the bottom row. Um, two, seven, nine, eight, six. That is three, four, or five, because it can't be one. Don't know what that is. Now, down here, we've got one, four, and six to place. That can't be one. Oh, it's funny how it doesn't open up a bit more when you get things. Seven is in one of those cells. It's not helpful. These haven't been... Ah, oh, that can't be a six anymore. Actually, it hasn't been able to be a six since all that long ago, which is pathetic that I hadn't noticed that. So we've got a five, seven pair and a two, four pair. These can't be six anymore, just Sudoku. Okay, I'm missing one of these diamonds. I bet I've revealed something. We've got that one done. Maybe I should mark them if they've been fully answered. We've done that one. That put eight here. That one put five at the end. Oh, going, oh yeah, no, it's all very well marking the one cell arrows. That has actually been done both ways. This has been done both ways. This has been done both ways. This says two is in column six, so that's been done. This one is saying that three is in either eight, no, seven or eight, so that's not a nine. And in the row, it's saying five is in now either seven or eight, which I could have got from Sudoku. So one of those is five, this isn't five. Ah, no, no, that only applied if this was a three, four possibility. This can still, oh, it can't be three, four. This can only be five, one. Now we've got a six there and a two there. Wow, I mean, I'm just losing track of the, the normal things. Now five there means that's a seven indicating it. That gives us a one here. That seven in the column means this is a three. It, we, say, we say sometimes that indexing is uh, a skill that just seems to fit the minds of computer programmers, and they've occasionally said that in the comments, that that's about right. Um, it's interesting, because I find it very counterintuitive. I really struggle with indexing. That has to be a 2-5, because 3 and 6 have been used in the column. 
Um, 725369. So the others, that's 4 or 8. This is 1, 4 or 8 in the column. Oh, that 1 is looking at that cell. You see, this is where I'm losing just normal abilities. <laughs> that's become an 8 now. So that's a 1. This is where the 1 goes on the arrow because it can't be here. Still haven't resolved these. Probably something is doing that that I can't see. This can't be a 7. 2, 4, 1, 3, 6, 1, 7, 5. Yeah, I know you're shouting something very obvious at me. I don't know what it is. There's a 3 in one of those cells. Hardly interesting. Ah, oh, this 9 can't be 3, 6, 7, 2 or 1, 8 because of those two 1s. So it's a 5, 4 pair. We know the order. Um, one, oh no, look, naked eight, naked one, naked six, finishes box nine. We might be on the road home now. That's a three, five pair. This is a seven, eight pair. They're not resolved actually, so maybe we're not. That's not one or five, it's three or four. Now, okay, what can this be? This C is a one, two, five, and a four. So let's put in three, six, seven, eight. This, by that token, is 4, 7, 8, or 9. But what does that mean for where 8 goes in the row? It means either there, 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 or there. Okay, well, that rules out 7, and not much else. Oh, that's frustrating. 6, 5, 2, 1. Um, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7. That is 3, 8, or 9, 2, 5, 1, 8, 4, 7, 3, 1. There is a 9 in one of those two cells. Not interesting. Oh, this can't be 3, 1, 4, because that would clash with that cell. Okay, that's good. So 8 or 9 there. Still don't know what that means. Um, this is six. Oh, this is a naked six, I think. It's got one, two, three, five in the column, four, eight, seven in the box, nine in the row. That is a naked six. That's going to put six in one of these cells. Six, three, one, eight, four, seven. This is a two, nine, five triple at the top of column six. One, four, seven, eight pair. So this is actually a three, six pair. Now, this can't be an 8, because one of those is going to be an 8. That's not actually very helpful, but an interesting observation to me. This can't be a 3, 3, 1, 6, 2, 5. These are from 4, 7, 8, or 9, except that can't be 7, and the top one can't be 8. So, 5, 7, 2, 3, 4, 5. I cannot see how to finish this off yet. Okay, keep going. Is it? Oh, now let's keep marking. Orange five. Yeah, that's done. And this one is saying, this is saying that eight. Oh, why don't I read, read the grid? This is saying that eight is now in row eight or nine. So it's in one of those two cells. The key thing about that is it's not here. So that's a seven. And this arrow is now finished. That is not an eight. Eight is self-referential there, which is fine. Ah, now eight in this box, and it can now be placed there. Three can now be placed there. That makes this a four. Two, four, five. Why is it not giving up now? Got a chocolate teapot quadruple there. Five's in one of those cells. Three and six are out there somewhere. Now, I've put everything in orange, so I think I've used all the information, and the rest is Sudoku. Uh, that, this is a 489 triple, isn't it, down here? Yes, so these have been solved, 8 and 7. That probably doesn't get us much further. Can't believe I still haven't done these, and I have, because this has to, this has to be a 3. Okay, now I haven't done those. 
but that's a 2457 quad. Always has been. This could have made made a three ages ago if I'd noticed it, paid attention to it, understood it. Um, so, four, eight, we get an eight here. Six, eight, four. oh look, I've got a four here that is resolving those arrows and has been for ages. And it's just been me being too much of a absolute numpty man to uh, to get it. Uh, honestly, I really am off form today. Or maybe this this rule set has done it to me. Um, yeah, I feel as mad as a box of frogs in some ways. Now, two, six, and seven here. That one can't be seven. That one can't be two. That is now not a seven. So seven is here. That's a nine. This triple's done. This pair is done. Top three rows are finished. This is a five, seven pet. They can be written in. This is a three, six, nine triple. They can be written in. That's fixed everything else. Three, six, two, five. And we finish off with two, seven, six. That is a very nice puzzle. I mean, I really like that. It's it's really neat. It's got a lot going for it, that. And uh, I mean, the idea that that was created in a collaboration, that's really interesting. I wonder, I mean, you can look at the live stream. I wonder how many iterations it went through, how many of these cells were there from the start, how many were added towards the end. My own feeling, and this could be absolute nonsense, is that the ones that are self-referential are a bit easier to add late on. That one, I thought I saw one other. Um, this was self-referential for the column, so I don't know, maybe not. I suppose then, yes, you could decide to draw in this arrow. I don't know, it's really interesting. I, I, it'd be very interesting to know how that came about. I will watch the video at some point. But uh, a great fun solve. Thank you very much to Ranks, Subtitle, Zetamath, and all the others I mentioned at the beginning, and anybody else who contributed. Somebody's probably going, hey, I said, do this, do that at some point. But uh, I really enjoyed that. That was good fun. Um, looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow for more Sudoku. Bye for now.